Welcome back, everybody. It's, of course, Sport Federation TV. And we every week we talk about sport in the province and uh, the various districts. Great to have you along. Um, right, so for those of you that have just joined us, uh, kickboxing, of course, uh, national sport in South Africa, Olympic sport now as well. And uh, that's very exciting. And we're certainly going to see even more interesting um, developments for kickboxing in South Africa. I've got the president of Kickboxing South Africa and the president of Western Cape Kickboxing, Josh Clitter, on the line with me. Josh, nice to have you back. JP, uh, thank you. And it's always nice to be back on the Western Cape uh, Sports Confederation TV. And it's always good to talk about kickboxing. Yeah, no, it's, and we love talking about kickboxing. And every time we talk about kickboxing, we find out even more about kickboxing. Um, but let's just talk about that quickly uh, for a second, because um, I think a lot of people still wonder about that, you know, the difference in different kickboxing structures. We see uh, MMA on TV all the time now. It's become one of the big things, uh, pay-per-view, people looking at the the likes of the uh, Conor McGregor's and the uh, Khabib Magomedov's and so on, which is clearly attracting a lot of audience. And the uh, viewership uh, data also tells us that fighting sports is the most viewed sports on Facebook in terms of videos. But different codes and all of those guys, most of those guys seem to have some sort of kickboxing background. Jeffy, I think, yes, uh, most uh, combat sports, if you want to call them martial arts, um, have offspring from kickboxing, kickboxing being a, a sporting code uh, emanated in South Africa in the mid-1980s. And uh, because of that, um, a lot of your, your MMA guys in South Africa has, has at some point have done or engaged into, into, into the sport of kickboxing. I mean, you're speaking of, 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 of MMA uh, fighters, but, you know, we in kickboxing, we had great fighters ourselves. I mean, you know the, the, the late Mike Bonaro, was a great ambassador for South African kickboxing. Who had his offsprings within uh, South African kickboxing as an amateur? So when when these fighters are, are doing this, they're, they're obviously kicking and they're punching, which is uh, the, what what kickboxing is all about. Um, but in your kickboxing, you have different different styles of kickboxing. You've got kickboxing sometimes with long pants on, short pants on, sometimes with gloves. Uh, just give us that that those breakdowns for kickboxing in South Africa. Yes, look, uh, and, and we one don't want to talk about kickboxing styles. We talk about kickboxing disciplines with, within the kickboxing uh, sporting code. And within as a kickboxing sporting code, we're looking at, at two types of, of sports. Uh, kickboxing disciplines that takes place on the tatami, which is the mat, as people would, would refer to. And then, of course, kickboxing within the ring, which most people are more familiar to. Now, kickboxing on the mat, uh, consists out of you got the musical forms where you do freestyle forming such as uh, the kata type of thing in karate that's the one musical forms and then you have uh, semi-contact kickboxing which where the person is only allowed to make contact once and then the fights get stopped by the referee and uh, resume again and then you have light contact kickboxing with the long pants on which is really similar to your full contact in the ring yeah. But you're not allowed to draw, to draw blood. You're not allowed to knock the guy out. And then uh, very recently we have uh, kick light also, which is a, which is a discipline on the floor on the tatami with the sword pens on, very similar to K1 kickboxing. Uh, uh, and then when we go to the ring sport, we have got fundamentally three types of kickboxing there. You got full contact kickboxing with the long pens, and then you have your low kick kickboxing with the sword pens, and then you have K1 kickboxing. Also with the short pants, the difference between K1 kickboxing and, and low kicks is that with K1 kickboxing, you're allowed to use your knees. And of course, with low kick, kickboxing, you're not allowed to do that. And that's your, your seven fundamental uh, kickboxing disciplines in the sporting code of kickboxing uh, globally. Uh, Josh, so in, one of the, it's, in which of those codes do the, do the athletes wear shin pads? We see, uh, we, we see that in training, we see that in fighting. Um, at which stage? Because we know they've all they all got gloves on, so their hands are protected. But um, there seems to be in those uh, disciplines, um, sometimes they're wearing headgear and sometimes they're wearing shin pads. Okay. So now, now JP, in all the disciplines, in all the disciplines, they wear uh, shin guards from an amateur perspective. Right. Uh, shin pads, 
as well as, as, as head gates, amateurs. The professional side, uh, especially uh, with the low kick, professional kickboxing, the K1 kickboxing, there the, uh, the, the participants are not wearing sim guards and they also don't, hear, don't wear head guards. So those are the difference where you see uh, participants are competing without sim guards, then that participant is competing in a professional uh, kickboxing contest. And the, the, the gloves and the shin pads, um, is there specific uh, different types? I mean, when we, when we see boxing, they talk about different ounces, different weights of gloves. Is there, are, are there regulations on, on the equipment in kickboxing? Yes, uh, all our gloves, all our participants wear the 10 ounce gloves. And the reason for that is, is, is it's a safety measurement. Uh, and of course, the density of the gloves change. You get eight ounce, you get 10 ounce, 12 ounce, 14 ounce. But in kickboxing, all our uh, participants are wearing 10 ounce gloves. Uh, that is a, a ruling that has been made uh, from a global, uh, from the global or the national, international world body. And the fighting itself, I mean, you're talking about tatamis, which are, of course, the mat where, where, where competitors can compete. And then you've got um, fighters who fight in the ring. Um, how much of a difference is it for the fighter to be standing in a ring versus on a mat where in the ring, of course, there's a rope around them? <laughs> I think, JP, uh, the ring has always been, been branded and, and projected as, as a very uh, demanding uh, kickboxing discipline. But kickboxing on the tatami is just as demanding because there you require more focus, more discipline, more sharpness, so really, uh, kickboxing are really greatly displayed on the, on the tatami sports, unlike maybe in, in, in the ring. But yes, the, the ring uh, normally has been perceived as a very, very uh, demanding uh, kickboxing uh, discipline. Uh, Josh, this weekend there is uh, a lot of the Western Cape athletes who are either from one of the district kickboxing structures or the Western Cape kickboxing structures. There's a competition this weekend happening here in Cape Town. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? JP, yes, you know, we, we, we uh, like most other sports, you know, we had a difficult, uh, difficult year. We just came from the African Championships, which took place uh, three, three weeks ago. <laughs> and, to, and to close off the year, uh, Cape Town Kickboxing has taken a decision to have a, a, a development event, especially for those who could not uh, make the South African Championships. Yeah. Uh, hence, uh, there will be an event uh, coming weekend on Saturday, starting at 2 o'clock at Vibrant Sport. That's in Ottery. And uh, it's, 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 it's pr primarily for, for our uh, beginning uh, kickboxers. And, and we, 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 we anticipate some, some great uh, fun and, and um, uh, opportunity for kickboxers to, to learn and, and, and to measure themselves against uh, other newcomers as well. So for a lot of those fighters, it will be their first time in the ring or maybe only had only a couple of fights in the ring. How, how much of an impact will the nerves be playing on the day? Look, yes, like I said earlier on, you know, it's always demanding uh, effort to get into the ring. So most of the most of the kickboxers that will be competing on Saturday will be uh, less than five five fights. Uh, some of them will be at one or two fights. And uh, going into the ring, being uh, so inexperienced, always nerve wracking. There's always some form of a stress level, uh, and whether it's good or bad, but it's always there. Josh. Uh, uh, we'll leave it at that and um, yeah good luck for the weekend of course we're hoping to see lots of videos and lots of pictures JP thank you so much and uh, yeah we will definitely uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep our, uh, our, our, our supporters and uh, spectators up to date we probably will have uh, some pictures on our Western Cape kickboxing website so yeah I think uh, Western Cape kickboxing is now starting to moving forward now Thanks, Josh.
There we go, folks. Josh Clitt, the president of Western Cape Kickboxing. They've got an event in uh, Ottery this weekend, a development tournament, part of the uh, Cape Town kickboxing structures. Well worth uh, checking out. And if you want to find out more about uh, kickboxing in Western Cape, or maybe how to join up, or see some of the, the uh, fantastic pictures of the athletes that are doing so well, then just visit their website, www.westerncapekickboxing.co.za. Folks, we'll take a break. When we come back from the break, we'll carry on talking sport in the province. Back in a sec.